Merry meet and welcome everyone. This is the Astro Tarot Show and I'm your celestial host Serona Rose and I am honored to be here with you all. I have a lot of information to share but first I know that we talked about cancer last week but since we're still in cancer season let's look at cancer from a different perspective okay. As cancer season is about our emotions, um, those can go off in different directions, right? It's not just about the emotions. Um, this can also um, go into the energy of taking everything personal. It can have touchy feelings. Um, and it, it is a time of oversensitivity. I will say that over the um, toward the end of the month of July, Pluto will make um, will oppose the sun and that will cause a lot of um, that will bring out a lot of our inner traumas, those traumas that we haven't dealt with. Um, it will bring those up um, and, you know, those times that your power was taken away from you. Uh, that could be a time that could be resurf resurf um, resurfing for you, <laughs> resurfacing, there you go, for you all. Um, this will be a deep journey into the dynamics of our relations as well, um, such as your spouse, um, and it's, you know, immediate family, someone in our family, it could be our ancestors as well. Um, and this could also be pertaining to our inner self, our innermost self. So normally it does take some kind of event, something that pushes us out of our comfort zone in order to, um, you know, some kind of um, some kind of power that pushes us to change, right? Um, just as wounds or triggers. Um, so, uh, you know, those things like that, those um, and what you suffer from, those can be catalysts for change if we allow them, um, allow us to awaken as well as heal if we allow them to do so. Um, this could include um, breaking family trauma. That is a good one. We are, in essence, being initiated into our next journey and Pluto is right there for us and wanting us to grow. Um, that is what has to happen. The old has to break break down and break away for the new to, um, to grow. We must heal. We must travel deep into those depths. Pluto says, if you really want to heal, you're going to have to go deep, deep down. And um, this is definitely the time. Midsummer is that the sun's zenith. So that is when the sun begins to descend. So making this more pronounced as of, um, you know, me, we must travel into those depths of our subconscious. And this is the God traveling into the underworld, uh, making the unconscious conscious. So that is really going to be um, in the, in the um, really be influencing our energy um, for the next month to come, cancer energy is it's very nurturing. It's very loving. Yes, but just as everything, it has a polarity. And we have to look at that and acknowledge that as well. Uh, we do have a new moon coming up. Um, it's actually a full moon that's coming up in Capricorn. And we will talk about that in just a moment. I want to talk about a few more things that are going on that will be influencing this energy. And first off, back on the 25th, 26th time frame, Pluto, um, I am so sorry, Pluto is on my mind. Uh, Mercury um, ingressed into the sign of Cancer. And then... Then Mercury had a square with Neptune. Now, this could lead to unclear thinking. So as we started this week, um, our thoughts could be a little bit unclear, maybe even scattered. Neptune is in Pisces. That's water. So uh, things could not seem, they could be not as they seem. Um, and it, it could be a time where you're unsure what to believe. and um, 
and this type of energy has been going on for a while, but um, it will be influenced again. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the other energetic influences that are happening that is bringing this into more of the forefront. Um, Mercury and Cancer is a bit different because Mercury is more logical. And remember, Cancer is about our emotions. So, um, you know, Mercury wants us to make logical sense out of things. And Cancer says, well, let's just feel it. Let's just see how it feels first. Um, but this energy will be great for communicating your feelings. So if you're in a situation where that, that's something that needs to be done, um, this will be good in energy for that. Um, and this will be a little offsetting for Mercury, but um, we'll see how this plays out. I do feel like this will be a good time to, to really uh, bring our feelings to the forefront and, and what we are feeling or emotions, that sort of thing, and make those very clear. Now, on the 28th, the sun will trine Saturn. This is really good energy. And this is just reminding us that if we work with this energy of change, if we take this energy that we are presented with and we work with it, right? We learn how to uh, transform, transmute, that sort of thing, um, that through this energy of change that we are going through, um, as well as the revisions that need to be done, we are going, um, going to need to... Um, uh, make this make this structure. We're going to need to bring these revisions of of our thoughts into structure. So this will be a really good time to bring them into reality. Um, you know, to really work on it, work within this, be productive, and bring this uh, give structure to this idea. Um, and this will really be worth our while. Now, the revision comes when Neptune goes retrograde in the zodiac sign of Pisces, and that will be on June the 30th. Um, this is, like I was saying about revisions, this is going to have us looking back at a dream that we might have had for ourselves. Um, you know, maybe it was a dream a while ago. Um, it's really going to be um, having us to look at it and um, to see what is the reality of it and what is the fantasy of it. So we're going to be working on making it real and making it, um, again, Saturn is all about structure. Saturn brings structure to the structuralist and form to the formless. So we're going to be about grounding that energy and making it real. Saturn's influence is really going to help this. Um, come about, but Neptune retrograde is going to make us tap into that and and really, you know, think of our dreams. What were we dreaming before, and how can we revision this to happening again? Now, um, on the thirtieth, Neptune stations retrograde um, in the sign of Pisces, which is his home sign, so he is strong here. Uh, Neptune is an outside planet. Now, it's not as strong as our inner planets, like say when Mercury goes retrograde, but Neptune's, that change will make it, will make its way to us. We will feel this. And how um, this isn't, you know, Neptune going retrograde is not an odd thing. Uh, Neptune goes retrograde once a year. And this is, this allows us the energy to rearrange things to make changes in our life. Um, we begin Neptune's pre-shadow back on March the 9th of this year, 2023. Uh, he retrogrades on June 30th, 2023, and he will be retrograde in the sign of Pisces until December the 6th of 2023. And we will ultimately leave his shadow, his post-shadow, um, March the 29th of 2024. So we are going to have over five months of this energy and he is really wanting us to make some changes in our lives. Um, this energy will be touching on our emotions and, you know, our intuitive abilities or, um, so we could be extra sensitive at this time. Um, this could be our, um, 
our emotions, like our feelings, as well as our um, our intuition and our psychic abilities. This has always been known a known of a time where people can. Um, their intuitiveness gets better, their psychic abilities enhance, you know, um, that kind of, that, that sensitivity is, um, is heightened. And um, this is really good time to pay attention to your dreams. If you are not journaling, this is a wonderful time to do that. Um, it supports going into um, the depths of our inner, most, this is subconscious energy. So, uh, it is a time to really journal our dreams. Um, Neptune wants us to take things to the next level. And he wants to know how we think about the world around us and what we see is going on. Um, uh, for dream time, for example, um, this could be a time of messages. We could have um, We could have weird dreams, really odd dreams, dreams within a dream that sort of thing. Uh, again, journal, journal, journal. I can't stress that, that enough. It could be a time of ancestors visiting us in our dreams, loved ones um, coming to visit us and giving us messages. Um, so, you know, Neptune is really, it wants us to work with this flow of energy. This is water. So this is about going with that flow and opening up to it, being receptive and receiving the information that it has. There's great, there's, there is a great message here and it is one of change. It is one about changing your life, but these messages are helping you to see, oh, you need to focus on this way. You need to go that way. Um, I will say that, um, this can be like, um, airy fairy type energy. So you will need to ground, um, for those that are just newly, um, opening up to their intuitive psychic abilities to all their clairs. Um, if in, in, you know, you're learning that you're empathic for all of those people that, are in that beginning stage. This could be a very overwhelming time for you. I will urge you to get out in nature, to unplug, to get your feet in the grass and the dirt, to really ground and allow those ions to heal you um, on that cellular level. Um, earthing is what they call it nowadays. So that's going to be very, very important for us as this um, energy um, is heightened as well as, you know, creative energy. This is creative energy too. So for all of you that are out there that are trying to create something, maybe you have been in a stalemate, um, kind of had a writer's block, that sort of thing. This is supporting that energy to create something. So um, any kind of art, anything that you, you know, you're working on, you've been stuck at, this is a really good time to do that. This is definitely a time of getting out of our, um, our comfort zones, okay, and making the changes that need to be made. Remember, Uranus is still in Taurus, okay, so he is, um, he's still stirring things up over there. Um, so this is, this is some change here. If you have any dreams that you have let go of in the past, uh, maybe it wasn't the right time. This is a good time to revisit that. Um, you know, and this is the energy about really analyzing where you're wanting to go and how you're wanting to live. Um, and, but being realistic about it as well. Um, also, this, you know, you could have had a change in perspective of this whole, of your dream. Maybe you wanted to do something before, but you wasn't really uh, clear on how that would happen. And, and now you're a little bit wiser. So you have a different, different perception of how you think that will um, play out. Now, um, I do want to, um, I do want to adhere to something I, I want to say this because this is a wonderful time of escapism 
Now, escapism for a short period is really good, taking a break, going on a, a weekend vacation. Um, you know, this, this week we have um, the weekend coming up is the 4th of July weekend. Uh, for Americans, this is a time of vacationing and things like that. Um, escapism that way is cool. That is really good to do. Um, it really, it helps you, you know, uh, rekindle yourself. It helps you uh, to rest and rejuvenate, that sort of thing. But escapism is really heightened here. And staying in that state is not a good thing. Um, Neptune retrograde in Pisces supports escapism such as uh, drug use, over drug use, over alcohol use, trying to remove yourself from that, from whatever this change and whatever this is going on that Neptune is pushing you um, in order to work through. So be careful of that. Um, you know, don't go to, don't go to that escapism. If you need a second, go get with nature, um, go get quiet with yourself and, and work it, work with it that way. Uh, we want to stay away from those things that will keep us in a delusional state. And we have to be careful with that. Also, um, <clears throat> We need to learn how to move forward and not stay in the past. We can look at the past and we can learn from our mistakes. That's one thing. We can learn how to not, um, you know, commit the same mistakes over and over again, but we don't need to stay in the past. That too can be escapism as well. Um, as far as all of these, this is a time for messages. Um, it could be a time where messages will come to you, something that you um, something that you needed to find out more about. Um, and again, this could be coming to you in dream time as well. It could be, you know, hey, you need to pay attention to this. This is what you need to look at. Um, this is a path you should be taking, that sort of thing, giving you little hints and ideas of where you need to go next. Now, let's look at our full moon that we are going to have on July 3rd. First of all, I want to talk about full moons and new moons in general. Both moons are, um, both new moons and full moons are very emotional times. Um, you know, they can, we could experience an influx with our emotions. Uh, new moons could make you feel very tired, uh, lethargic, that sluggish, that sort of things, while full moons can have you full of energy and bouncing off the wall. And sometimes people are opposite with that, okay? Uh, you have to pay attention. This is why I always uh, talk about journaling and, you know, dream journaling. You have your dream journal and also journaling about these moons and how these moons are dealing with you? What are you going through? How is this energy playing out with you? Um, in astrology, that's what we do. We're looking at patterns. So this can help you look at patterns for yourself so you can learn from this. Um, the, it won't be something that you have to go over and over. So again, this can, you know, both moons can be very emotional and can make us, can take us off track a little bit, make us feel uneasy. Um, this is normal. Again, moons will affect us in different ways. So, um, you know, be aware of that. Now, so that you know that these things can occur, let's get into this, this full moon because um, this full moon will take place on July 3rd at 7.39 a.m. Eastern time. Remember, guys, I am in Eastern time, so you will need to adjust the time for your neck of the woods. Um, we will have the full moon in the cardinal sign of Capricorn at 11 degrees and 19 minutes. So this means that a full moon is opposite the sun. So the sun is in Cancer at 11 degrees and 19 minutes. Now this is opening up an 1111 portal. And 1111 is, um, is a higher vibrational number. And it is also, we also have um, 
Mercury that's right here involved with this, Mercury's not exactly, well, yeah, Mercury is right there with the sun at 11 degrees. So um, this is really opening, and opening up this portal of communication. Um, this is intuition as well as compassion. Um, the number 11 is the number one mirroring itself. So um, this is, um, this can be about inner conflicts with the self. Um, you know, it, it is about you looking at um, the number one facing the number one is the inner self. It's like your inner voice talking to you. Okay. Um, you know, our, it's like our higher self guiding us. There we go. Um, now, when the sun opposes the moon, this is always, um, uh, it can bring, it's not an, it's not a harmonious um, placement, okay? It's not a harmonious aspect at all, because this can bring out some discomfort and strain that we're experiencing in our lives. It can, it can cause a separation, um, and it gives us challenges for growth. So this could be about inner conflicts with the self. Again, the 11 about, um, you know, us talking, an inner voice talking to ourselves, looking at ourselves in a mirror. And it's a time that can be, that we can be very emotional and oversensitive. So we have to be careful with that. Um, now there is um, that ultra sensitivity again. So we need to pay attention to that. Um, so Capricorn full moons, um, Capricorn is very determined energy. It's responsible, it's disciplined, um, and it's committed. It's committed to its, its, its cause. But on the other side, the flip side of that, it is, um, you know, we live in a world of polarity, so we have to include that flip side. Um, the moon in Capricorn can be very rigid. It can be opinionated. It can be pessimistic. Um, it can be very restrictive because when it's focused, it's committed. And sometimes in that focus, it can be so, um, so focused on what it's doing that the rest doesn't matter, right? So um, now, also, I will say that um, Capricorn, you know, um, Capricorn is not an emotional sign. So when it's with the moon, it's a little off, okay? Um, we could also see uh, the moon is the moon is cancer's home sign. So the moon is in an opposite place of itself. It's very uncomfortable. Um, so this could add some complexities within our own personality. Uh, this moon tells us that we need to be self-sufficient and that um, it needs to be one of, of an unshakable commitment to ourselves. Um, and where this challenge is going to come in, this is going to come in within our materialism and within our money. And so this is going to be uh, Capricorn is related to money and materialism. Capricorn in its in its uh, detrimental state can be very materialistic. So that will be highlighted. The sun is in Cancer, and um, its key word is. Um, I feel, and Capricorn's key word is I use. So those are two different aspects completely. Cancer is a water element and water can be gentle and refreshing, but it can be downright destructive. Uh, cancer likes to retreat into its shell and it can be like water with the shifting of emotions or tides, so to speak, um, underneath it. So this adds more complexity to the shadow. Um, this could go into building different defenses in order to hide our deep emotions. Uh, watch out for that. Also, um, 
it is about being loved and being approved of. So we can, you know, try to seek that out from other people. Um, that is very important uh, for cancers is to be loved and to be approved of. But we have to be careful that we don't sell ourselves out by doing so. Um, you know, can cancers are very family oriented and um, cancer is a very intuitive energy, um, but it is connected to money as well, believe it or not. But it is in the fact of like security. Um, so. It's going to be about um, holding tight to your possessions. So this Capricorn moon is about feeling secure within emotional waters. Yeah, um, this combined energy of the sun and the moon is giving us force and compassion um, to our creativity. And um, this is excellent energy for attracting wealth. So all of you out there, um, this is powerful energy and um, this is one of regenerate, re, uh, regenerative energy. Uh, it's transformative. Um, this will, again, be emotionally intense because um, the moon is not comfortable where it's at. It's in its uh, opposite. That opposite is... Um, again, when we say we look at an opposition, this is a strain. This is a discomfort. So when the moon is, the moon is water expansive, right? It's just, it goes where you have earth, where it is a contain, container and it is restricting. So you can see how that can go in a, um, go in effect there. Um, again. Like I mentioned before, the Mercury is also with this. So we could be receiving some kind of information. Um, now, interestingly, the sun and the moon will also be conjunct the dog star Sirius, uh, which is where the sun is, sun is in the United States birth chart of July 4th. So um, which is the next day. So we could possibly see some new stories coming up around America, some stuff that's going on there. Um, we'll talk more about that um, in a little bit. For us personally, we could, this is like revolutionary energy and it's wanting us to step up and um, evolve. Um, it is about breaking free, uh, finding the truth and uh, finding those answers that we seek. This is also this placement, the sun is... Um, um, this this energy is going to be close to um, Shiva, the destroyer. Now, Shiva destroys, so new growth can happen. And it's opposing the moon. Um, so uh, Shiva is is sitting right with Mercury. It's right close to Mercury. So this could be... This could be um, revealing some news, um, some information on top-down structures, uh, such as our governments, banking systems, um, corp corporations, uh, those, those places of power, as well as elites. Um, since 2008, Pluto has been in Capricorn. Now, remember, he did go out a little bit, but he's come right back. He's retrograde now, and he has retrograded back into Capricorn. So we, again, this is highlighting some deep revelations um, that could be coming to the forefront um, regarding everything that Capricorn represents, banking systems, governments, everything of that top-down power. Um, this also includes the pandemic. Um, this is connecting us to the pandemic when that came out. Also, remember Occupy Wall Street? Yeah. Pluto and Capricorn. So Pluto and Capricorn is, um, you know, and he saw some banking failures as well not too long ago. Uh, July 4th is America's birthday and Pluto has returned to Capricorn um, for this. You know, remember when Pluto, before he went over, um, he got into Aquarius a little bit. Pluto in Capricorn is in the natal chart of the United States. 
So this is very influential. This is very important energy because it's taking us back to the time of the founding of the United States. Uh, Pluto retrograde led to um, revolution in France, um, uh, the downfall of the Roman Empire. Um, and over the next few years, you know, uh, remember Pluto has a 248 year orbit. So he has some time to, to work out his energy and it doesn't happen. This energy will not happen overnight. This is something that gradually will happen. This is over the years. Um, this is also taking us back to January of 2020, the onset of the pandemic. Um, and what's really interesting is that the space between the moon, the full moon and Pluto um, is the conjunction spot where Saturn and Pluto conjoined on uh, January the 12th of 2020. And that was at 22 degrees of Capricorn. So um, it's, we're connecting back to that energy, that global pandemic energy. And um, we can look back and see what has happened from that, see what that has created. I also want to say that um, Pluto retrograde also was um, connected, saw the Black Plague as well. That is crazy. So Pluto will leave Capricorn in 2024. And um, then he'll be gone for 248 years. So um, this is emotional intensity. This could bring about some deep personal, uh, powerful feelings, some repressed energy, that sort of thing. Um, Back in 2020, it was Jupiter, the Sun, Saturn, Pluto, and um, a Mercury in the South Node. They were all opposing that North Node as well. So that was um, that was very important too. Um, and then Shiva, Shiva the Destroyer. So we will definitely see. Well, Shiva the Destroyer is added into this now, but we will definitely see some transform transformative energy. Um, now, before we end the show, I want to talk about Neptune one more time because he is going to be very active within the next few months. Um, on August the 22nd, Mars will be in Virgo. He will oppose um, Neptune. This can make us feel very stagnant, like we're not going anywhere. Um, that is temporary. Don't lose your cool. Um, so um, we're not just just keep uh, you may feel like you're just regurgitating energy. It's temporary by September the 19th. The sun will be in Virgo and it will it will oppose Neptune as well. Um, so this is um, this could be not getting the recognition that you're needing and what you're doing, something that you feel is very, very important. And maybe this could be a time for you to step back. Um, it seems that other things are taking you away from what is important. Um, so maybe it is a time for you to step back from the limelight a little bit um, and bring some balance back in your life. Maybe uh, look over what is more practical and realistic at this time. But October the 2nd, Mercury and Virgo will oppose Neptune. And this will be about miscommunications. Um, this is advising us to double, not only double and triple, but quadruple check all information. Don't jump into anything really hastily. Again, this will be in October. So um, this is just an outlook of what's happening. Um, um, then on, let's see, um, November the 3rd, Venus in Virgo will oppose Neptune. And this could be telling us not to overspend just in time for the holiday season, right? That's a big time that... A lot of us feel pushed to overspend money and to buy, um, spend money out of our means. We need to be very, very careful here. Here, as Neptune is wonderful, it is. It can be very spiritual. It can be very creative. It can help us revisit our dreams and really look at them. But it can be uh, deceiving. It can be um, delusional as well. I would like some to add some very important information about this full moon. Uh, this may be very intense energy for those that are developing, that are developing their um, intuition um, or um, psychic abilities. So please, please, please ground, ground, ground. Um, 
um, this will also be a very good time for those to work with their intuitive abilities and their psychic abilities, all their clairs, to start working at developing them better, learn for protection if need be, learn how to tap in and or tune out when you need to. Uh, for air signs, this will be very intense and it'll be very mental for you. Please don't stay in your mind. You will, um, that will, can be a, a part of escapism as well. Just when you're staying in your mind, you're escaping because you're going over different scenarios that hadn't even happened. Bring yourself back to the present. For water signs, this can enhance your creativity and it can be a wonderful time to open up to new change. And for those fire signs, this will be a wonderful time to implement action into the changes uh, to make those things concrete and stable like Saturn wants to do. Um, all those things that you're wanting to create in your life. So that is it, everyone. Um, a lot of information. I do know. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please stay tuned for the tarot part of the reading uh, and see how all of this is going to um, play out for us. So stay tuned for the divination portion of the reading. <music> 